Next on the Broadway show, The First Timers Club. It's Tony's weekend, and we're talking with some of this year's hottest first-time nominees, including Rachel Dratch, Miles Frost, Gabby Beans, and more. Plus, you'll hear from some of Broadway's biggest stars, including Hugh Jackman, Jesse Tyler Ferguson, and many more. It's Broadway's Biggest Night. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and you're watching The Broadway Show. So glad you're with us for this latest edition of The Broadway Show. It's going to be a good one. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Broadway's Biggest Night is back. It is Tony Awards Weekend, the 75th annual show, live Sunday night on CBS and Paramount+. Plus. And we're celebrating the best and the brightest of Broadway. The big show, hosted by Academy Award winner Ariana DeBose. On this episode of The Broadway Show, we're not only breaking down the biggest races, the who's who, and the what's what, we're also showcasing the First Timers Club, the great actors and rising stars who are nominated for the very first time. But first, let's talk nominees. Because for the first time in Tony history, there are six wildly diverse shows vying for Broadway's top prize. Here are your nominees. Michael R. Jackson's A Strange Loop tells the story of Usher, a black queer musical theater writer working on a musical about a black queer writer working on a musical about, well, you get the idea. Girl from the North Country combines the mind of acclaimed playwright director Connor McPherson and the songs of music icon Bob Dylan to tell a story about the residents of a depression era Minnesota boarding house. MJ brings more than two dozen of the hits of music icon Michael Jackson to Broadway. The show weaves together the King of Pop's origin story with electric dance sequences. Mr. Saturday Night brings Hollywood funny man Billy Crystal back to the story of fictional Catskills comedian Buddy Young Jr., a role he first played in his 1992 film. At 74, Crystal is making his musical debut with the show. Paradise Square is a musical set in 1863, as both free black Americans and Irish immigrants live and love together among the dangerous streets and crumbling tenement houses of Lower Manhattan's Five Point Slum. And Six the Musical gives the mic to the ex-wives of Henry VIII. With its radio-ready score, this pop concert spectacle comes from the duo of Tony Marlowe and Lucy Moss, who dreamt it up during their school days together. Three new productions of classics from different eras of Broadway are vying for the Best Musical Revival Trophy. Company, Carolina Change, The Music Man. The Tony Awards is the best award ceremony. Trust me, I've hosted the Oscars, I've hosted the Tonys. There's nothing like the Tonys. Being there and getting to celebrate with all the other people in your industry that you never get to see, watch all those people perform and getting to perform. It's like the best Sunday night you could have. Some of the theater world's top writers are nominated for Best Play on Sunday night. Nods go to The Lehman Trilogy, Hangman, The Minutes, Skeleton Crew, and Clydes. The Best Play Revival category honors new stagings of classic plays from Broadway's past. The nominees are Take Me Out, For Colored Girls, How I Learned to Drive, Trouble in Mind, American Buffalo. There's only one Broadway. There's only one Broadway on the planet. There are a million places you can make a film, uh, play a sport, teams you could play for, TV shows you could make, you can make them anywhere. Broadway, New York, is there's only one. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Thanks, Tamsin. There's nothing like receiving your first Tony nomination. I'm here at a Broadway.com photo shoot, getting to know five of the talented performers getting ready for their big night at Radio City. Good to see you, Miles. Likewise. How are you surviving Tony season? You know what, I am thriving. I am not surviving, thriving. I'm thriving. No, this is it's such an amazing opportunity. It's such an amazing journey. It's a magical journey, and I'm having so much fun. You've been through a lot in the last couple of months. You made your Broadway debut, now you're a Tony nominee. I mean, yeah. what, what a crazy journey. How you feeling? How's your ego? I feel fine. I mean, I feel like it's, it's sort of washing over me like a dream and I'm just enjoying whatever comes, you know? You're a first timer. How does it feel to be in the club? Do you feel like you're in a club? I've been made to understand that it is in fact a club. I didn't realize I was not in the club, but now that I'm in the club, I realize there's a club. Did they teach you the handshake? 
Uh, there is a handshake. Uh, I can't. I can't do that on camera. I'm sorry, but uh, it's very detailed. It's very. Yeah, it's a lot more difficult than you would think. Jeanette, so good to see you. I am so happy to be here. What a wonderful time this is. Tony season. This is my first time, and it's exciting. It, the air smells good up here. You get to sing some fantastic Bob Dylan songs every night in Girl from the North Country, yes. including Like a Rolling Stone. So to quote yourself, how does it feel? How does it feel? It feels so good. I am grateful for this moment. I'm grateful for this opportunity, and I don't want to take it for granted, so I'm taking in every moment. Rachel, you're a first time Tony nominee. How does it feel? Ooh, very exciting. <laughs> Is there anything Debbie Downer about being a Tony nominee? No, there's nothing. I can't think of one downer about it. Like, I've never, I'm not part of this, usually, like, the award circles and anything. So it's kind of fun to be like, you know, what's going on in here, you know? So, yeah. Is this. Something you would consider a, a goal? Uh, is this like, was this on a dream Yeah, this list? was definitely on my dream board. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I had a few little things that I wanted to achieve or whatever, dreams. And like one was to do Shakespeare in the Park and one was to do Broadway. Oh. And I don't, I can't really think of another one I have. You're done now. I might be done. <laughs> you know, those were the two. So um, yeah, it's, it's really, and then the Tony was like, that wasn't even on the, that wasn't even on the board. So wow. that's a fun wow. extra. You uh, grew up in the Bronx. I am from the Bronx. You're a real yeah. New York girl. You went to LaGuardia High, the that's fame right. school. LAG. <laughs> so what did the Tony Awards mean to you? Did you watch them as a kid or? You know, I didn't watch as a kid. I watched as an adult. And I, I was always in awe of the talent and I thought it was a wonderful thing. It's so funny because this time around, I'm in a new show, but I wasn't thinking about the Tonys. Like my commitment to the show is like solely based on what we were, the, the art that we were presenting and Tony's wasn't in my mind at all. So when the nomination came, I was really surprised because I'm like, oh wow, oh yeah. Oh, well, this is awesome. We, we weathered so many other storms and we overcame so many things just opening up in 2020, then 2021, then 2022. You know, we were just happy to be back on Broadway and just, you know, people coming to see the show. So this is just a, and a bonus, a beautiful bonus. <laughs> what does it mean, this, this sort of period that you're going through right now? And are you able to sort of soak it in? A lot of things have kind of come together at, at this very specific time uh, in the world, in my career, in my life. The play itself, I mean, we're, we're really hitting on something that's very, very in the zeitgeist in a lot of ways. A lot of the stuff that's being talked about in the play. And so it does, it feels much bigger than just being singled out for my performance. It feels like a recognition of all of our work, a culmination of all of the people that have helped put this together. What is it like seeing your name on a list with other nominees in, in a fancy category, like leading actor in a musical? It, is, it was so surreal because it didn't, it didn't hit me until it happened. Like I wasn't thinking about, because I'm so into the work. My job is to cater to the story. I, I do this because I care about the story and I care about, you know, portraying the story and the character in the, in the best light that I know how. You know, so when it kind of was like, hey, you're gonna be here with this person and this person, I'm like, huh? They're such cool people. And to be amongst legends as well as, you know, newcomers like myself, it's surreal and I'm honored to be in this class. It's cool, it's cool and I'm super humble and I'm super appreciative. We'll pick back up with Paul in the First Timers Club in just a few, but first. I want to break the cycle that's so ingrained in me, but change comes way too slow and I am in a hurry. There's a Strange Loop is already a Pulitzer Prize winner, and now it's a most nominated show at this year's Tony Awards with 11 nods, including Best Musical and Best Actor for another Broadway newcomer, Jaquel Spivey. The best part of being a Tony nominee is being a Tony nominee. The, the feeling that comes with knowing that people appreciate the work you do every night, it's, it's just, I don't know, just to know that the work is seen and people appreciate it. And it's my debut. So it's like I'm coming into this like, am I doing it right? Do I, do y'all like it? <laughs> and um, it's just, it's a beautiful feeling. A whole lot more coming up next on The Broadway Show. Coming up. It's the countdown to the Tony Awards, 
And we're continuing to celebrate Broadway's rising stars and first-time nominees when the Broadway show returns. I'm Tamsin Fidel. We'll be right back. The Tonys mean a lot to me because uh, I watched the Tony Awards from my kitchen table in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, they were my window into Broadway and they were what solidified my decision to become a theater actor. So to be a part of that community and a part of this award season is really profound. And also to be a part of the, the Broadway season that's bringing Broadway back to New York is really special. This has been an incredible year um, and a hard couple of years for us as the Broadway community. So to finally be in the space where we can celebrate each other, see each other's shows, to have audience members come back in again, I think that's it. That's the beauty. Welcome back to the Broadway show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. Let's get back to it. The Skin of Our Teeth is Thornton Wilder's classic play. And this year's revival earned six Tony nominations. One of the show's stars, Gabby Beans, making her Broadway debut and earning her first Tony nomination. Let's check back in with Paul Wontorek. I'm assuming it's very special to be a part of a season with so many black voices mm -hmm. amplified on Broadway. How does it feel to be a part of Broadway in 2022 and, and the Tonys this year? You know, in 2020, we had this reckoning of uh, the, the theater industry at large sort of looking at itself and, and asking hard questions about who we allow to tell stories, whose stories are worthwhile, and so on and so forth. So to be uh, part of this reopening season and to see that Black creators are being given a, a huge stages to display their talent and to tell our stories, it feels incredible. I'm an optimist, so I hope that this moment is indicative of a larger seat change, but I think that by giving black and uh, queer and people of color artists these sort of positions of power in institutions, we can make a more lasting change. What kind of works really excite you? I mean, if you look ahead about what, where you hope your career goes with this extra boost, mm -hmm. what kind of things do you want, what kind of stories do you want to tell? I mean, I'm really someone who's drawn to good writing. So I have like a bunch of writers that I, I, I really admire and who I'd like to work with and hopefully maybe, you know, they'll, I'll get their eyes on me through this. Um, but also I just think um, I'm really, interested in stories that have a strong social conscience that um, are doing the work of like imagining what the world could be not just reflecting sort of the day-to-day -day realities that we're living with so i i what my, my biggest hope for my career with this tony's nomination is just that maybe i have a little bit more agency in my career so i can be a little bit more selective about and do what you suggested i was already doing which is be able to sort of create a body of work that has intentionality around it. It must feel, being in POTUS right now, it almost feels like a public service to be delivering a comedy like this. I kind of get this sense when the audience is laughing, like they're laughing at the play, but then they're also like, there's this extra layer of like, ha ha ha, we're out and we're having fun. And like they're laughing, but then they're also excited just to be laughing. Yeah, I mean, there's something about just that shared experience and hearing like a thousand people laughing. That's really just the fun of it all. It's like the joy bomb of the whole thing. So tell me about theater you did as a kid. As a kid? Well, as a kid, I was just into like the school play and I, you know, but, but also at the same time, like I watched SNL and Carol Burnett and, you know, um, you know, laughing when I was really little. And I definitely wasn't like the lead of every play in high school at all. Like I, you know, like, I was Amaryllis in The Music Man. <laughs> like, and then, like, you know, I'd sort of, like, work my way up every year, which has sort of been a theme for me. Like, I don't, I'm not the person that, like, instantly, like, fresh on the scene, here's the star of the show. It's just more like, I mean, like most people that I know in the biz, like, you know, it's a steady, steady climb, but yeah. Slow and steady. Yes, yes. Well, that means, like, you know, in 30 years, maybe you'll be Angela Lansbury. I mean, I who, know. who knows? Not maybe you'll become what? a grand lady of the stage. <laughs> That's me. Look, I got the sleeves for it. <laughs> this today. We did a glam photo shoot. I'm dressed as a grand lady of the stage. I know you have a family now. What is different about this happening to you at this point in your life versus if it had happened like, you know, right out of school? 
it must hit you differently. Absolutely. You know, it happens, you know, these things happen when they happen, if they happen. This happened at just the right time in my life, you know. Um, I was able to see what the opportunity, what it was, and appreciate it for what it was. I, I knew um, from a creative and artistic standpoint, and also having done Broadway, knowing what the demand was, understanding the risk that was involved, so I wasn't kind of coming into it kind of, you know, haphazard, and, and I know full well the demand of what I was, was taking on and the responsibility that I would have in the company. And, and then having the, the, the success that we've had, uh, you appreciate it. You know, every moment that I've ever had in my career has been special. You know, the first job, you know, the first time you get paid, the first law and order, right? Like these things, they're all super, super important. In the words of Richard Greenberg, it's really tough to eloquate. Really. I always talk to actors about how do they balance getting ready for events and doing the events, but this is like so multiplied for you because <laughs> you add the COVID element and then the fact that you're new to it. I mean, this is all sort of like, there's no like guidebook to hand you. Yeah, you know, and that would have definitely been helpful <laughs> to a degree, you know. <laughs> you I'd... could write that book for the next guy. I could, that's actually a great <laughs> idea. I might just do that. You know, because like you said, the element with COVID and everything like that's really been the it's been the dagger and everything. You know, whether it's taking that taking that th that week off or week and a half off or you know however many days it is, and then coming back to a two show day and you're like, I think I'm up to it, and then you realize halfway through the second show that you're not. You yeah. know, and just having to deal with the emotions that come behind that because you want to give a solid performance every night. You know, I want to exceed, I want to do better than the show yesterday. That's how, that's how I process and yeah. do my thing. I know that you play the stock market. So do you look at the list of Tony nominees? Like you look at the stock market, like, well, that's a, is that a winner? And that was not going to do you it. You know what? I don't. <laughs> um, I'm just, we had the nomination launching. Yeah, you um, got to week. hang out with everybody. Hang out with everybody. And I feel like we're just, I'm just happy for everybody because I know what it took to get here. So I'm just happy for the journey. And I feel like we're all winners at this point. Everybody on Broadway, we're winners because we're doing something that so many other people set out to do that couldn't do. And we're doing it every night. And you don't need a Tony to say like, oh, I'm a winner. You're a winner because you're in this cast. You're a winner because you're doing what you love. You came to New York with a dream and you're making it happen. The Broadway show is back in just a sec. It's the trophy that celebrates the world that I fell madly in love with when I was 15. It's like a dream come true, you know? It feels like squishy like a marshmallow and like you've been invited into a part of this community that I love and respect so much. Thanks for staying with us for this latest episode of The Broadway Show. Glad you're here. The Tony Awards always take time to honor theatrical legends and trailblazers with special awards. Beloved stage and screen star Angela Lansbury has already earned five Tonys since her first win in 1966 for Maine. But this year, she's receiving a special Tony Award for lifetime achievement in the theater. Let's check back in with Paul in the First Timers Club. Big TV appearances are extremely powerful. I remember as a kid seeing Michael Jackson moonwalk on the Motown 25 special. I wish I saw it. Blew my mind. You're gonna be appearing on the Tony Awards. You yes, never, don't know, some kid somewhere is gonna see you, maybe moonwalk, I don't know what you're gonna be doing. How exciting is that for you to get to appear in the telecast? I'm super excited. I, I cannot wait for the rest of the world to, to see MJ, you know, and, and the light that we that we bring to the stage. And like you said, like, it's gonna be some kid out there that's like, oh my God, I feel like I saw Michael Jackson and be inspired by that to do, you know, whatever he or she wants to do. And that's another reason why I, I, I do what I do is to inspire whoever, kids, people my age, people older, you know, inspiration doesn't have age and aspiration doesn't have age. How are you gonna like treat yourself when all of this madness is done? I think I wanna like go somewhere close to the water that's not the Hudson or the East River. That's the post Tony's goal. Yeah, it's just somewhere close to water, not in the five boroughs. 
That's a good call. Yeah. Think you can pull yeah. that off. That's achievable, right? Yeah. <laughs> I like to like, you know, under promise and over deliver even with myself. What does your son think of your newfound Broadway um, success? When he came off the school bus, I was like, I was nominated for a Tony, and he didn't know what that was, you know, so I was like, well, it's just Broadway. And then, then the next day, like, he went to school and he told all his friends that I was not, but they didn't know what it was either, so he had to tell them, so. <laughs> but yeah, now the whole fifth grade knows, so I'm sure they'll be watching. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. I'm Tamsin Fidel, and this is The Broadway Show.